video on semiconductor material. In this video, we will again continue to solve problems that are related to the carrier concentration. Few of my previous videos on semiconductor material based problems related to the carrier concentration, compensation, doping, charge neutrality, mass action law concept have been explained in two different videos. The video links are given in the description box below. Just have a look into it and then come back for this problem solving approach for estimating the carrier concentration. The first problem statement says that for a silicon sample at 300 Kelvin, the equilibrium hole concentration notation has been given and that value is 410 to the power 12 per centimeter cube. So we need to determine the electron density. Also, we need to calculate the acceptor density if the donor density is 10 to the power 12 per centimeter cube, assuming that all impurities are ionized. So we know what equation that we need to use when all impurities are ionized. This statement comes from the charge neutrality concept. So the concept has been explained in the video link that are given in the description box below. Now to estimate the electron density, first let us understand that the given equilibrium hole concentration is 4 into 10 to the power 12 per centimeter cube. So electron density is nothing but the amount of electrons or the concentration of electrons. So that again comes as N naught. And we know by mass action law, we can uh, easily identify what is N naught by N I square by P naught. And since the sample that is being given is a silicon sample, so my N I, the intrinsic carrier concentration, I know that it is uh, 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube. Now, after substituting the intrinsic area concentration and the equilibrium hole concentration, we get the total electron density as 5.625 into 10 to the power 7 per centimeter cube. So the next part of the problem statement asks us to find out the accepted density if the donor density has been given as 10 to the power 12 per centimeter cube. So ND has been given, donor density has been given as 10 to the power 12 per centimeter cube and additionally we have been given with the statement that if all the impurities are ionized which means uh, we have both the types of impurities because you also need to understand donor density concentration has been given except that density concentration has been asked so which means it is by default understood that both the impurities are involved as a process of charge compensation and also if all the impurities are ionized we know what formula we need to use which means we have to go with the equation of P0 minus N0, which is equal to Na minus Nd. Now, I think we have what are the parameters at our hand. We have to find out what is Na. So, therefore, my equation changes as P0 minus N0 plus Nd. And we have all these details where P0 is... 4 into 10 to the power 12 per centimeter cube. N0, which we have found out as 5.625 into 10 to the power 7 per centimeter cube plus 10 to the power 12 per centimeter cube. So, therefore, the final Na, the acceptor density, will be equal to 5 into 10 to the power 12 per centimeter cube. So, that's all. So let us now move for the second problem in the same series where we are given with the Fermi level. So in short, I would like to uh, tell about Fermi level where the position of Fermi level is purely an indication of carrier concentration in a semiconductor. So here the Fermi level in a silicon sample at 300 Kelvin is located at 0.3 electron volt below the bottom of the conduction band. So we need to understand that it is at the bottom of the conduction band. From that, it is 0.3 electron volt below. So this, I will draw it in terms of the energy band diagram for better understanding. So then the effective densities of state, which means for the conduction band, the effective densities of the state has been given as 3.22 into 10 to the power 19 per centimeter cube. And for valence band, the effective densities are given as 1.83 into 10 to the power 19 per centimeter cube. So we need to finally determine the electron and hole concentration at 300 Kelvin and also the intrinsic area concentration at 300 Kelvin. Let us now proceed the solution of this particular problem in terms of first the energy band diagram. So the problem statement is clearly told us that the Fermi level is located at 0.3 electron volt 
below the bottom of the conduction band. So this is the bottom edge of the conduction band and this is the topmost edge of the valence band. So from the bottom edge of the conduction band, it is 0.3 electron volt below. So I have drawn the Fermi level just below the conduction band in terms of 0.3 electron volt approximately. And we need to know that the intrinsic Fermi level because there is also at the part B of the question, we need to identify the intrinsic area concentration. So in such a case, the intrinsic Fermi level for a pure semiconductor lies exactly at the middle of the conduction band and the valence band that I have also indicated. And also we know that the energy band gap EG is represented between EC and EV. So that the EFI and EC, this band gap is EG by 2. And between the intrinsic Fermi level and the valence band is again EG by 2. So the total energy band gap is between the conduction band, bottom edge of the conduction band and the topmost edge of the valence band. That is what is nothing but the forbidden energy band gap region. So that also I have marked, so we, which means we are going to estimate this for solving our problem. And also we need to estimate EF minus EV. I'll let you know why I have marked these two things in the red color. Because these two are the parameters that we are going to estimate first and then we are going to proceed with our problem. So from the energy band diagram, we understood that the energy band gap EG is nothing but EC minus EV, which can also be written as EC minus EF plus EF minus EV. So if you take this as one single equation, plus EF minus EF will get cancelled. So obviously it is EC minus EV only. But we are writing this in terms of EF. We are bringing EF purposefully because we know what is EC minus EF, which was given in the problem statement as it was indicated that the Fermi level is located 0.3 electron volt below the bottom of the conduction band. So from this statement, we understood that EC minus EF is 0.3 electron volt. And what about this energy band gap? If this parameter is known, the only unknown parameter that will remain is EF minus EV. And this EG, which is the energy band gap of a silicon material, is of 1.1 electron volt, which is known to us by default, which is a constant. So here, this EF minus EV, the equation will become as EG minus EC minus EF. Therefore, 1.1 we know EC minus EF is 0.3 electron volt. And therefore, we obtain 0.8 electron volt as EF minus EV. Now our ultimate objective is to find out the electron and hole concentration in the first part at 300 Kelvin. And also what is the data that is given to us, which is the effective densities of state, NC has been given and NV is also given for us. So now for the electron concentration, including NC, I have taken this formula because I know NC and I just have EF minus EV at my hand. And also I know what is EC minus EF. So EF minus EV, I have just found out to calculate my whole concentration. So when I write the whole concentration equation, you will understand why I have calculated EF minus EV. So now NC is known to us. EC minus EF is already given. Both the things are given. So this KT, it is, uh, we have to identify what is KT by Q because uh, EC minus EF, we write it in terms of electron volt. That one electron volt conversion to get that, we always use KT by Q here. Or it is simply EC minus EF into Q you have to multiply. So instead of that, we just take KT by Q because we know that it is uh, at 300 Kelvin, which is a default value of 0 0.026. So that we can take. And just substitute all the values, we'll be getting the electron concentration. Now, after substituting the values for NC, EC minus EF and KT by Q, we have got the electron concentration as 3.1410 into the power 14 per centimeter cube. Similarly, we have taken the whole concentration with the data that was given for us as effective density of states for valence band was given. So we have taken NV and we have just now found out what is EF minus EV with the help of uh, the energy band gap EG value of a silicon sample. And KT by Q, as usual, we know that it is 0 0.026. So with this information, it is very easy to find out what is the whole concentration. Now, the second part of the problem statement asks us to find out what is the intrinsic area concentration at 300 Kelvin. So when it is 300 Kelvin, we know KT by Q remains 0 0.026. So there is no issue with that. Now we need to identify what is the intrinsic area concentration formula with respect to NC and NV because we have the data with respect to 
this particular problem is only the effective densities of state. So with respect to that, the intrinsic area concentration formula changes to square root of NC NV exponential of minus EG by 2 KT. So this is the formula that we need to use. If it is with respect to N0 and P0, and if you can afford to find out in terms of using the mass action law, that also you can proceed. But since I am proceeding with the given problem statement of effective densities of state, because we need to consider that if suppose part A was not given, and if we are directly given with the effective densities of states of NC and NV, and if we are asked to find out what is the intrinsic area concentration without any dependency of N0 and P0, then it is wiser to use this particular formula. So that's why I have taken this formula because uh, from mass action law, you people know how to use the formula of N0 dot P0 equal to Ni square. So since that was most repetitive, and since if you have to consider this kind of problematic approach, I have taken this particular formula, then it is just a mere substitution of all the values that is given in the problem statement. And then here we have got the intrinsic area concentration and it is almost closer. So you know, right, because the intrinsic area concentration, it's by default, it's a constant for a silicon value, which is 1.5 into 10 to the power 10. And here almost we have attained an approximate value closer to the 1.5 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube for a silicon sample at 300 Kelvin. So that's so important. If the temperature is changed, then you cannot just blindly substitute this 0.026 for KT by Q. And also again, I remind that I use KT by Q just for this EG being represented in terms of electron volt. That one electron volt conversion gives me this KT by Q. Got it? Yeah. Hope you all have enjoyed this video watching how to solve problems related to the carrier concentration. The first problem was completely different where we have just continued with our previous videos to understand about the charge compensation, impurities are getting ionized and when both the impurities are into the problem statement and we have also understood from the mass action law how to estimate the accepted doping concentration. So that was first problem of its sort. The second problem was completely different where we are given with a new data called Fermi level, the energy band gap, effective densities of state. So with that, we have tried to understood how to solve this particular problem to estimate electron concentration, hole concentration, and intrinsic area concentration at room temperature, which is 300 Kelvin. Meet you all with another interesting video on problem solving approach for the semiconductor materials. Until then, stay safe. Thank you all for watching this video through Electronics Insight channel.